Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Evil Men. Chris, are you okay? Help me! I forgot to brush my teeth! <laughs> <laughs> this man needs toothpaste immediately. Brush his teeth. <laughs> Nurse, brush his teeth. <laughs> We're losing him. <laughs> oh, there's a piece of fudge in his molars. <laughs> I hate when they die. <laughs> I where, hate when where, they die. Where am I? Is this heaven? Yes, son. You died because you didn't brush your teeth. <laughs> oh, crap. I mean, I'm sorry. Crud. <laughs> Wow, I do want to say Improv. I rushed my I, I rushed here I, I I ate a few things for lunch Ooh. and then rushed didn't and I didn't brush that. my teeth so I am thinking about well, it. Well, you can't just say you ate a few things for lunch. Tell us the details. Yeah, you didn't tell Mike and I this. So yesterday was our eldest daughter's birthday and uh, my wife put most of the party together because I was coming home from Picton, Ontario. Mm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, and then she made. My my daughter said, nobody likes pizza anymore. Everyone <laughs> likes quesadillas, mom. So Kathleen made a ton of quesadillas for all the kids. And then some of the kids were like, hey, where's the cheese pizza? Oh, my God. So this God. was just your daughter's opinion that she was claiming. Forcing on her friends. Oh, my God. <laughs> so she ate quesadillas. But then some of her friends were, they weren't even polite. They were like, hey, where's the cheese pizza? And it then so <laughs> Kathleen did order a giant oh cheese pizza for God. them, too. And wow. so we have all these extra qu quesadillas. So I just threw it in the pan, threw sour cream and peppers all over it, hot sauce. Wolfed, wolfed a few quesadilla slices down. Wow. I wonder if Kathleen was at all skeptical, like, nobody likes pizza now. Like, that's a new thing. Yeah. That's a bold like, claim. Yeah, I would have believed it. Like, oh, maybe the young generation, they're more progressive than we were. Maybe <laughs> pizza is something. Italian appropriation. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah, pizza is what straight white men like. <laughs> <laughs> we like right, quesadillas. right. I forgot. <laughs> I do like it. Wow. But uh, disaster averted, the kids got their precious they got cheese both pizza. quesadillas, pizzas. They got to make their own sundaes. You know what? Wow. Let's take a special moment for my wife. She did a good job putting the party together. To Kathleen, to raise Kathleen, your mugs, boys. We got tea and, and mugs. You mentioned that there was a bit of a stress involved. If you want to talk about that, as well, <laughs> because oh God, well, <laughs> this is totally true. I'm not making up this lie to evade authorities. Last week, Kathleen was on a beautiful sunny day, running back from the park with our youngest daughter, and she and you and this happens to me too. When you're playing with your kids, you forget that you have. An older body now right. that's not as coordinated, oh. not as, you mm -hmm. know, monkey bar tastic. Mm -hmm. But they're running along the sidewalk, and yeah, she jumped up on a curb that's taller than the sidewalk to pass our daughter in a race, tripped, fell off the curb, landed like shoulder and face first. Oh, oh no. So then she actually, like, over the. So this week at work, she had a black eye, and it got worse over the first three days you know three days it takes to pop up really bad yeah so she's still got the remnants of a black eye when all these parents are <laughs> dropping and picking <laughs> off their kids from our house <laughs> the father wouldn't even let them order pizza <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i'm standing there like hello i heard a lot of comedians have mental illness <laughs> <laughs> the cbc should fire him it's you know what it's how they're funny but it's also like it's really sad <laughs> No, but yeah, so it's like, and <laughs> Kathleen even mentioned, like, not a lot, only one mom asked me what happened to my face. All these other ones are, like, being quiet oh, and not no. not addressing it. And I'm like, well, you got to fucking say something. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, you actually do get honey? Mad? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Is oh, there fucking punch you, man? <laughs> Is there something you'd like to tell all the parents, honey? <laughs> yeah. Hello. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Holding her arm really yeah. tight. Say Ta it. Say it. Tell everyone, Kathleen. <laughs> Tell them how you fell having fun. <laughs> Tell them I'm kind and gentle. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm uh, Amy's dad. I'm from 1948. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. You know that's, what I mean? That's stressful. It, it, it is stressful, I'll actually, because be I feel like I'm already the weird guy in the neighborhood. Because <laughs> everybody's, like, so 
Uh, like, there's a lot of parents that are super like regular. You know yeah. what I mean? Like business people or people that want business. <laughs> hey, <Whoa>. Bruno! <laughs> Bruno just jumped <laughs> over our <laughs> heads. Um, that was amazing. I, I will be honest. Like when you see someone with a black eye, mm-hmm. it's impossible, kind of, yeah. to not to think that could happen any other way than a punch. Like it does seem like it's perfectly because it just made looks. Yeah, and then when so, and then I feel like if someone's like, no, no, I fell. It sounds like a lie. I know. Hundred percent sounds like a lie. I'm I'm sure there's some people that will not accept that I <laughs> I'm not a psycho or something. While you're talking about being uh, innocent of domestic abuse, I'm staring directly at James's cat's anus. <laughs> it was just r- just yeah, displayed nice. right in front of my face. Bruno, I can pull him off the table. No, I'm sorry for the distraction. Can you hear him? Yeah, that's can you hear him? Giving mm-hmm. Bruno the mic. <laughs> Bruno sounds like this. <laughs> I know. His face is warped. Oh, he warped. looked at me. He recognized the sound. Uh-huh. Um, well, um, that's, that's, that's too bad. That's very uncomfortable. But you know what? If you know Chris, you, you, you would know this guy wouldn't hurt a fly. I wouldn't think you would hit your wife. Now, James, can I ask a question? Now that Bruno the cat is on the table, mm. Mm. Thank taking, you. taking the elevator up to your place today, mm-hmm. I saw that there was a notice mm. uh, taped to I've the wall. I've seen this. It yeah. said, attention. Please mm-hmm. don't put loose kitty litter into the garbage chute. Mm-hmm. It clogs it up. Was is that this, is no. this about you? Absolutely no. not. Is this about you? And I did think, oh, like, because I obviously put the kitty litter in a bag, and then I walked down the hall. I tied you up walk bag. around, though, with just a handful <laughs> of litter and just sort of tossing well, it. Oh, maybe if I'm hungry. <laughs> but I throw a tied up. Like trail mix? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I throw a tied up bag down. But then I thought, what if they're referring to me, like, and the bag comes undone down the chute? But, Michael... I know it wasn't me because when we were in Japan, a new notice went up. So someone in my building, I think, just dumps their uh, cat pan down the, the kitty litter that's, that's just my guess. That's like feral behavior. It is that's weird. crazy. Oh, there's some weirdos in my building. There's an empty parking spot in the underground parking that someone has put up two pylons in a big sign like with rope across it like, do not park here. And they never park there. The sign's been up for, like, months. But I guess they're so worried someone's going to park in their spot. They made they bought two pylons and made a big sign. Now can and you like reserve p- spots? You here? just get one when you have a oh. condo. So, all right. Wow. Anyway, there's, some, there's a lot of fuss pots in the building. Although, to be fair, I can understand being fussy that you don't want people to dump kitty litter down right. the garbage tube. Yeah. Well, you're bringing a cool, relaxed vibe to the building. Thank you. Some punk energy. Thank you. Uh, when you have these uptight people, so it's good. I appreciate that. Um, like, I read this news article a while ago <coughs> that a guy in New York in a high rise was reaching down into the garbage chute because he dropped oh his phone God. down there I saw and this. fell in. I know. And he died. I know, I saw that. He uh-huh. literally died from getting crunched in a garbage chute. In a New York building. He dropped his phone in Could the Can you imagine shoot? knowing that that's how you're going to die all oh. of a sudden? I mean, I feel obviously horrible for the guy, but when you see the video, uh, aside from being just extremely upsetting, it's also like, you're. this was a crazy thing to do. He yeah. He literally goes headfirst down a garbage chute, I guess, to get his phone. I mean, I don't know what in you think New is going to happen York. here. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Only in New York, baby. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. Maybe there was a different. Not to blame him for no, his own I don't blame demise, him. It's horrible. But possibly in that moment, you want to take a breath and think, is this the smartest option? Mm-hmm. But you know, yeah. Uh, I, have you ever done something though, like, like I've had moments where I'm like, maybe I should do this really stupid, <laughs> possibly life-threatening thing. <laughs> like once Bruno got yeah. the cat got to the balcony next door, and he wouldn't come back, like under the little divider. Mm-hmm. And I thought to myself, should I climb? around <laughs> the balcony and climb onto their balcony and i really considered it and then i'm like what if i died and if i slipped yeah. i just die because of the stupid cat <laughs> trying to get a <laughs> dumb be the dumbest cat? way yeah. to die ever remember that story i was obsessed with last year but the high school baseball phenom graduate who oh jumped yeah. off the cruise and just was like instantly gone for the rest of i hate i mean his life it's in really the ocean yeah. upsetting i i think i was so obsessed with that too because after a few drinks i could have been that mm-hmm. person, especially at 18 or 19 yeah. mm-hmm. or 25. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? 30 even. Like mm. I, 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 yeah, I, uh, yeah, I lose like a lot of sense sometimes after a few drinks. 
Uh, <laughs> I yeah. mean, I guess that's kind that's of common. obvious. That's common. That's <laughs> common. Like you're, I've noticed when I'm with you after a few drinks. I want to jump off stuff. You want to jump off stuff, but your driving becomes a little erratic. <laughs> <laughs> um, His faster, operation of heavy faster. machinery yeah, yeah. gets a little <laughs> looser. Yeah. But you know you're still in charge. Like I still trust you, but it's my just value of <laughs> other <laughs> humans' l- lives uh, seem to yeah. diminish. And you always like, what if we do Russian roulette? And you have like, <laughs> you open that case where you keep that old pistol. <laughs> what if we do Russian roulette, but with a bow and arrow? <laughs> <laughs> but you can see if there's an arrow very obviously. <laughs> Imagine. Whatever, I'm going first. <laughs> I'm going first, and I don't have an arrow. <laughs> yeah. Now you. And I put an arrow in it. Uh, oh my God. Uh, mm. But no, I do like, yeah, I don't know if I would do the head dive ever mm. down a garbage chute. Down a garbage chute, shoot. yeah. Hmm. Dummy. Mike, uh, I saw a news story <laughs> I wondered if you'd be interested in. <laughs> okay. Um, Try me. Mr. Vladimir Putin. Oh, I'm not a big fan of him. Oh, really? No, okay. No. Well, he made an announcement. that <laughs> <laughs> Putin? <laughs> no, no, but that is a good one. Oh. He Thanks. wants... Vladimir Putin is what I call him. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, Vladimir yeah. wants to um, wants Russia to make a video game system to yes. compete with Xbox oh. and Nintendo. Yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. Nintendo and Xbox are in trouble. Yeah. I think that's exciting for gamers yeah. around the world. Because a, a lot of Russian gamers, I think, because of the... Uh, trade sanctions that have been imposed because of the invasion of Ukraine. Mm. They can't play the games we can play in the West. So it, they should, of course, create their own video game uh, console and they could do tweaks on the games we enjoy from a Russian POV. Exactly. Like maybe Yoshi has a shaved head yes. and is really ripped and is kind of scary and mm-hmm. is training in a Aryan race militia in the woods somewhere. Yeah, or ultra hooligans. Like they fight... Uh, they go to Europe and they fight people on the streets. Yeah. Uh, Remember those <laughs> line inkses or whatever from Zelda, Breath of the Wild? What were they called? Oh, those lion guys? Yeah. Oh, mm. I They I were the hardest to fight. They were hard. But imagine in Russia, um, Link has to fight them, but they look like Putin shirtless on a horse. <laughs> 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 or like... Um, Actually, I guess he would be the hero, so... Mm. Like, do they, still, they still make FIFA games, right? Like mm-hmm. uh, Soccer, soccer yeah. Oh, yeah. So instead of like the w- FIFA games we know... A Russian version of FIFA soccer would be like you have to. There's no soccer, but you have to fly to like America or the UK or Europe and poison <laughs> a a Russian like um, opposition politician or something, right? And escape the country before you're arrested. Yeah. Like that could be mm-hmm. be fun. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, what if you're? It could be a play on Kirby. Yes. What if your character starts getting poisoned, and then you? You have to have a little team that helps try to put his face back together before it melts <laughs> off. <laughs> like, didn't didn't that happen to a guy's face one time? Or maybe no, they gave him uranium, right? Yeah. Polonium, yeah. something. Or that polonium. Guy, that, that guy was, was like, wasn't he the president yeah, that was cool. of? That was was cool. it Ukraine? Well, oh no, that's a different one. He was a Ukrainian president who was poisoned. And his face was all pockmarked and fucked up. Mm-hmm. I think he died not too long after. But they, they poisoned like a former KGB guy in London by putting radioactive. Poison in his tea. Yeah, that's the one I'm thinking. And his tea. Yeah, and then they, they, they found like do investigators do found do a do 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 <laughs> do 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 they found a trail of radiation, f- like tracking exactly where he had traveled. Oh my! And his gosh. body had to be interred in like a very thick concrete coffin because his body was radioactive. And other people close to him got like I sick th- or died I think from so. it too, right? Yeah. That's how I want to go. That's clever. Really? Yeah, yeah. That's clever espionage. Mm-hmm. Just putting radiation in people. Now, James, mm. I don't... Uh, now, maybe I'm being a little silly here, but if someone put milk or dairy in your tea, mm-hmm. you'd probably have a similar reaction. Well, actually, Michael, you're really not up to date on what's <laughs> going on with me. Dairy's not really a big issue. Okay. Although okay. I do, yeah, I do d- don't d- go d- crazy. I don't eat a big bowl of ice cream, but... Right, right. I well, don't really. But if they dip a toast in it, bread, <laughs> gluten, yes, I would have a similar problem. <laughs> You're like, we we suspect Russia dipped bread in James's <laughs> tea. Yeah. yeah. This has been the gluten report. <laughs> <laughs> Gluty. Glutes. Mm. Well, I do think that I have a problem with dairy, but I can still I think have I small increments. I actually think the percentage of people who. Get older, handle, or yeah, and just yeah. can't handle dairy is like al- almost everyone. <laughs> yeah, like it's a it yeah. It. I, I have like you get the more way. proves to be a bizarre thing that you yeah. ingest. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's really weird. <laughs> um, 
Mm-hmm. So you, so you, if you ate a big bowl of ice cream, you'd you'd be <laughs> going to the toilet, and it would stink like fucking, <laughs> like a demon got run over by a truck. <laughs> <laughs> Don't oh, stinks! Yeah. Holy shit! I just ran over a troll from the <laughs> fairyland. Kids, hide! The ice cream van is coming. <laughs> I, <laughs> I love that song, man. Yeah, well, you know, like um, that disgusting troll Muppet from like the Labyrinth or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yes. Imagine he got run over by an ice cream truck and his face popped open like a zit. <laughs> oh, that's what that's my what farts <laughs> smell like after <laughs> some ice cream. <laughs> Sorry to be so gross, but. It's true, and I hate it. It's embarrassing. Do you switch to? But also, ice cream's good. It so is I'm good. Oh, I'm screwed. It's so good. Yum yum yum. I really. I know this is boring, <laughs> but uh, try a lactate pill. It actually is a huge game changer. I'm gonna do a lactate pill one day and just go to fucking town. Mm-hmm. It's like it's like um, Viagra. I'm seeing a picture of your brother and his kids framed over there on yeah. the shelf, mm-hmm. and me, uh, me and your brother have a really good photo that joe yeah. fuda took at your wedding yeah i'm gonna get it printed off and frame it and put it on your shelf <laughs> <laughs> sure sure Will this be the summer that your brother takes us out on a boat i he think we should go in july sure he where will we go boys let's throw a dart at the map of the world and that's where we sail well it may have to be around kingston ontario because that's where he lives well, let's, hope but done. <laughs> let's get a, a map of kingston and yeah <laughs> we'll throw a dart at the map of kingston yeah, imagine, exactly. Oh, imagine sailing from Kingston to Kingston. Imagine oh people God. in Jamaica being excited for our ship to arrive. Yeah, they're all standing yeah. on the port, <laughs> cheering. <laughs> like it's those guys from the Evil Men podcast, but they'd say that in their patois. Right. I guess is yeah. it racist how I said Kingston? Even mm, I'm, it's, I'm saying it, it as a reggae fan. Yes. I apologize if I it came across too harsh. But yeah. I would love for all the people on, uh, yeah, down by like Montego <laughs> Bay or something, waiting for our boat to come in. And c- quietly but slowly, the volume increasing as the boat <laughs> gets closer. They can hear like. <laughs> Don't you worry, or whatever. But it's like yeah. us and your brother standing oh. on the boat waving at everybody. That'd be amazing. That'd be such a good welcoming. Yeah. Wow. And maybe we all got hall passes, so there's these lovely yes. ladies welcoming us. And oh my God. Well, I would like force my wife to give me a hall pass <laughs> if you were listening to the first part of this episode did, did you did you mention this when the, when the parents came to pick up their kids at yeah. the party hi i'm amy's dad i also have a hall pass right here <laughs> for the party <laughs> <laughs> no oh my god don't get too no crazy. i didn't mean in case know, i ever go uh, with my friends on a boat to jamaica yeah. i have a hall pass <laughs> first thing i would say uh like what are you uh, docking the boat and dismounting the boat or whatever Mm -hmm. uh i would start telling all the locals how what good jamaican food we have in toronto (laughs) (laughs) that's how i would ingratiate myself to the new (laughs) island if you're ever in toronto there's this subway station called bathurst station (laughs) that sells jamaican patties underground in an unventilated restaurant get it with cocoa bread (laughs) seriously you're gonna thank me later (laughs) yeah 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 you guys should come to freezing cold, <laughs> shitty ass Toronto. <laughs> 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 Although today, warmest day. Spring has officially sprung. It really mm. feels like spring. Yeah. I busted out my jean jacket. No more mm, winter shit. It looks shit. good. I hate winter coats. Thank mm. you. I hate fucking winter. Like, Evan wants me to get a warm. jean jacket. Jean jackets rule, dude. Hmm. They're so cozy. But yeah, I, I think I'm intimidated by them. I, I don't know why. Like I, I do worry sometimes. <laughs> like, oh, this guy thinks he's Joe Cool. Mm. But, but you look cool. Can you ease into a jean jacket? I still also look very much like a dad. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks. Because you wear jeans on your on your legs. Oh, true. Maybe you can slowly <laughs> wear a little jeans, like l- more and more jeans, jeans on your I torso. Like that a strip at a time or s- sleeves. Maybe, maybe like a, um, a not jean necklace, but like a jean um, handkerchief. Handkerchief. Yeah. Do you remember James's old joke? Oh yeah, yeah that's yeah. right. Hat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was a good one. <laughs> no, Gene Hat. No, I love this Gene, Gene Hatman. Gene Hatman. Maybe by this time next year, the three of us will be podcasting all wearing jean jackets. Imagine you know the Canadian that? tuxedo joke? Yeah, jeans <laughs> and a jean jacket. I don't mind that look. Yeah, look, you're right. I'm wearing jeans and a jean jacket. They're black, but yeah, mm. looks cool. But I would do the blue too. Blue too. 
Bluetooth. Mm. Oh, have we <laughs> recorded since that incident happened at Laugh Sabbath? I don't think we have. Oh. Because that guy was wearing a Canadian tuxedo, I believe. He looked... I'll never get his look out of my fucking mind. It's Prepare yourselves for a wild story about the dangers of doing live comedy in Canada in 2024. Mm. Well, Tim Gilbert and I were co-hosting this show last week. Mm-hmm. I believe it was last week. No, I guess it's... Two well, the end of... The yeah. yeah. Two Laugh weeks Sabbath, ago. the long-running, iconic Toronto alternative L- comedy show. Literally started in what? 2005? Yeah. It's yeah. insane, dude. Almost 20 years. What the hell? And but look it took at us now. It took almost 20 years for this to happen, though. That's the that, but that's why I say stick with it yeah. to anybody who's starting anything. You never know when a weird giant is going to like a weird giant. He's like six, three in our audience. Uh, you know, as soon as Tim and I take the stage and you guys know Tim Gilbert, La- uh, evil men, regular mm-hmm. and laugh side with regular. Mm-hmm. Uh, he doesn't take any crap on stage. No, no. Um, probably one of the funniest guys in the universe, mm-hmm. but we're just going to go loosey goose and <laughs> host this show and whatever. And so we're having fun off the top. The audience is like when, you know, as a comedian host, like you have to wrangle them and show them what's funny f- at the top. They're all like nervous and watching, but this guy tries to commi- loosen them up. Yeah. Loosening them up. Good. G- yeah. Good way of putting it. This guy wanted to dominate right away and did a huge belch. Pretty sure it was him. And we're like, who did that? And we're going around. Then we start trying to talk about the show, and he keeps piping up. This giant guy, 6'3 or something. He kind of looked like um, an extra from Asterix. <laughs> 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 he was huge. He had oh, a big, I shitty mustache. Asterix, yeah. right? Do you yeah. agree? Yeah. He looked like a, sh- a guy who auditioned for Asterix live-action <laughs> film and didn't get the part because <laughs> he eats too many cupcakes. But anyways... Okay. No, well, not to body shame. But no, no, no. I wasn't. He looked like a flabby no Viking. Problem. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I got a belly, so I'm not body shaming, but you can. And Tim's a Viking. So yeah. yeah. Tim's a Viking, and I've got it. I'm flabby. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we know what we're talking about. Hmm. But that's what he looked like. So then I pipe in, what, which is one of my usual things to do, as I go right at them. And I said, uh, You might be bigger than us, but Tim and I are crazy. And he goes, I'm crazy, too. And I go, oh, yeah, prove it. (laughs) And then he stands up and pulls his pants and underwear down (laughs) in the middle of the room in front of everybody. People behind. Was he there alone? He was with a girl. He was with his girlfriend. That was going to be the reveal. His girlfriend grabs his arm and goes, no. (laughs) And then he pulls his pants back up and sits back down. And we're like, okay, you win, whatever, you know, type of thing. <laughs> but then for the next 10 minutes, I think we roasted him into the grave. You're like, oh, it stinks now because you pulled your dick out. Your dick stinks. It really <laughs> stunk in the room. I'm not joking. Did you notice that? <laughs> well, So I was at the back of the room. So you saw his ass. Right back. All I saw was a man, a giant man, stand up and wiggle his butt. And you guys react going, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, I think it's shirt maybe covered his dick but i don't think so because tim said he saw his scrotum (laughs) so people in front of him looked back and saw his scrotum at least and people behind him saw his big flabby viking ass and then he just sat down and stayed for the entire show and just glowered at every act and just like Mm. didn't crack a smile and also no one thought like maybe we should ask him to leave he yeah he (laughs) didn't get kicked out he stayed. His girlfriend stayed with him. And how old were him and his girlfriend, roughly? Like, seemed like our age. Yeah. Oh. Maybe. 40s-ish? Yeah. I'd say 39 to 42. Oh, wow. Yeah. And he said he was a voice actor on two cartoons, and we have heard his voice before. Oh, and then so my God. I wonder yeah. who it is. But that... that I wish I taped it, because there's some good roast jokes going on on me and Tim's <laughs> part. But Tim was genuinely, like, stupefied for a sec. Because I think Tim was instantly thinking, like, (laughs) this is sexual assault. (laughs) So you don't really have a memory of seeing the penis truly? No. I personally don't. Wow. But you were just so shocked. that, Like... Because even it's if he pulled the pants yeah. down, that's one thing. But he it did stink after, though. And I almost <laughs> I think I fell on the stage <laughs> laughing about that. <laughs> that it stung. It's also hard to see anything. Do do dick. As Brandon Ash Muhammad. Yes. Right. That yes. Name. Yeah. He actually messaged me that he asked me to tell him what happened. And I told him he said, do do dick. In his did he? Yeah. Yes, he did. That's awesome. Uh, 
it's hard to see anything when those bright lights are shining on you when you look out into the mm. you know, yeah. the, the meaningless crowd of of uh, regular people. You yeah. know what I mean? I always want like that classic Motley Crue thing where like you know, a fan of the show will show us their boobs or something, but I was not expecting <laughs> Has that this. ever happened at a stand up no, show? No, only <laughs> this. Only a giant shows With us his scrotum. A stinky <laughs> penis. A stinky penis. <laughs> But I want to say this to people out there who are going to stand up comedy shows. The temperature is hot these days. I feel like people's insanity, especially in audience wise, is at a fevered pitch. People are nuts. Really? You think it that, seems huh? a, li- a little bit more. Yeah. Maybe and I think I f- there's a combo <laughs> of like post pandemic and the current state of politics. Mm. I think there's that. And then I also think is making everyone insane. Social media. But also, speaking of social media, I think the TikTok crowd work yeah. clips have made e- all these regular right. non-comedians think, oh, you go out and you fuck with them and then you make a famous clip. I do think, <laughs> yeah, the temperature definitely changed pre-lockdown to post. If yeah, it, I don't, it's bizarre. Do you, I, I, I know I'm going to sound like an old, bit uh, more aggressive uh, too. an oldie, but I, th- I sort of thought, oh, I guess I'll probably like TikTok. Like I ended up liking Twitter and Instagram and all the other stuff, but... I think I don't. I think I give no, up on it. I, I I don't like anything. I've. I mean, I know I'm old, but no, no. Every now and then I'll post something like, if I think it's like a total throwaway thing that I don't care about, but it's I don't like it either. I, I don't check it. I forget to check it. I sort of don't understand the d- d- the drive for people who get into a lot of TikTok stuff because it seems like a lot of it is people like explaining something in a humorless way to people, and it's maybe wrong. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's like a lot of TikTok. There's a lot what of you, misinformation What's the aspiration uh, beyond that? I don't know. Whatever. Well, there's we've seen people get famous from TikTok and yeah. then like act in TV shows or movies and or go on like comedy festivals and mm-hmm. they don't have what it takes mm-hmm. in the long run because they never built a career on top of like one minute snippets. Yeah, it's it's crazy. It's like you fucking dumbass idiots. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, well, you got to like work still is valuable. Like putting mm. in work into something is still valuable, I think, mm. which is nice about the rise and fall of whatever's happening with TikTok now. Because I and also Canada is going to ban it. Right. Oh, there is definitely a part of me that's secretly kind of hoping that happens just so I don't have to feel bad that I never <laughs> got into it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like what China's doing is really bad here, guys. Yeah. But check out my Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Before we get to this week's evil man, let's mention that we have a Patreon account. It's at patreon.com slash evil men. And if you sign up and pay a small fee, you get two bonus episodes a month. You get to join our Discord and you support us helping us make the show. So we really appreciate that. You help three artists, three clowns who are sort of trying to ply their trade and put food on the table. You do. You You do. Uh, And if you already are on the patreon thank you thanks very much Mwah. you know i w- one of our discord members who goes by the name internet user he's going to mexico mazatlan to see the eclipse this week which will have already wow. happened by the time this episode comes out to where mazatlan or yeah. maybe i'm s- maybe i might Fabri- be being i've heard of fabric land never oh heard of magic land no it's a real place in I mexico but it's very the narcos tv show yeah it's yeah. very um, prominent, I guess, in the path of the eclipse. I'm afraid of the eclipse, and I try and stay inside all day when there's an eclipse. Mike, you've got to look go at blind. the sun. I don't want to go blind. No, Mike, you can look at the sun. Internet That's user. liberal BS. This comes out after the eclipse, so I hope being that close to the path of the eclipse, you didn't turn into some weird demon beast or anything because of the power of it. Yeah. Mm. Let's hope. Well, Fingers crossed. Don't do any weird rituals. I, I guess think it's too late. I think the last... Um, I don't know if it's North America. The, the last time an, an eclipse like this hit North America, I think it was like 1970 or something. Whoa. Oh, yeah. Um, June, 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 The eclipse. Here yeah. comes the Free sun. love. Uh, Hello. Nixon. Oh, Vietnam. Nixon. Yeah. Tin soldiers in solar eclipse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my yeah. God. Yeah, 70s. Oh, the 70s, you know. <laughs> Who cares about the eclipse, man? The hippie dream died. The last time there was an eclipse, <laughs> um, people had were growing out their bushes, you could say. Oh, you mean their pubic hair? Yes. 
That's a great point. Whereas now everyone Maybe this will bring that trend back. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Because now everyone. Everyone. All Mike, three of us. Yeah, Mike. Yeah. Like you, you. First thing you do sometimes yeah. when you come in is show us that you're completely yeah. hairless well, everywhere. When I arrived here today, I said I was I had to go to the bathroom, and I was actually doing some just cleanup work. Uh, <laughs> I brought my razor. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I love. You know, I like how much pride you take in your <laughs> absolute <laughs> bare skinned. I shave them every morning. <laughs> That's nice. Shave yeah. them. I mean, my my. Ball, my scrotum. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Shave it. it. Imagine you only mm. shaved your scrotum where the balls hang, <laughs> and then the rest <laughs> of your scrotum still had full hair on it. It's so like it's like these big round circle sh- oh, clean shaves. Oh, I like that's that. <laughs> yeah. And that's all because of the eclipse. <laughs> <laughs> the eclipse makes me kind of crazy, man. We Well, we might. If, if you get randomly horny at 3 p.m. Eastern tomorrow, mm-hmm. you're going to know why. There's a uh, kind of a... Druidish kind of, um, you know, what do you call that? An like ancient um, eminence. Yeah. An ancient are you guys yeah. gonna get special Energy glasses vibration. to look at it? Um, My yeah. kids are, and I'm like really nervous about that because it's like, how do we know? <laughs> right. These are like not <laughs> glasses. E- it's quote a unquote eclipse glasses from Dollar Tree. B- it's a scam from the <laughs> eye doctors. Yeah, and they're trying to sell these fucking glasses. Mm, Everyone fucks up their eyes. Yeah. Then they, guess who they got to go to? The eye doctor. Big eye yeah. doctor. Yeah, big, big eye doctor. Big eyes Man. industry. Um, I'm just gonna look to make sure the camera's set up right. But are you gonna <laughs> do it? Are you gonna yeah. do yeah. it? Um, I don't know. Probably, I'll probably hide inside until it's over. What time is it at? <laughs> <laughs> Three p.m. Michael. Oh, Perfect okay. time for a break. And All right. Uh, I'm gonna. Go, I'm, I'm gonna look at it. Imagine you hear the. City just going crazy. Ah. Well, it's it's a state of emergency in Niagara because it really goes through Niagara region, oh, and shit. I believe um, schools are closed tomorrow because yeah. you yeah. don't want yeah. kids looking at it. I'm definitely gonna go outside and look up there and think about it. I can picture you already wearing your now. nice uh, wearing a nice suit with your hair combed nicely Ooh, and yeah. uh, your <laughs> yeah <laughs> a little cappuccino and your. Just waiting for our friend Mr. Sun <laughs> to come you by. You know what would have been interesting? <laughs> Imagine you got married to tomorrow during the eclipse. Like in the, in the ceremony, the I do's were right when the yeah. when it goes dark. That's a good idea. It's a good omen for. Uh, yeah. Can you not look at the eclipse, but hold your phone to the sky, take a picture of the eclipse, and look at your phone? Will mm-hmm. you go blind looking at a picture of it on your phone? Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's like the ring if you look at it. <laughs> I I I'm scared. I'm genuinely scared of this ancient druidish mm-hmm. um sort of phenomenon. Mm. Well, we'll see. We'll see what happens tomorrow. Oh, my oh yeah. You're not on the plane tomorrow, Mike. That thing. No, God. no, no, no. Yeah, the plane would disintegrate. Oh into shit. Ash that falls from the sky. Ladies and gentlemen, our next stop will be the Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> the next stop is heaven or hell because we're gonna <laughs> die, folks. <laughs> when we were flying Have back from uh, South Korea, a man got sick on the plane. An old man, Ooh. Mm. and they were on the uh, p- on the PA. They were like, um, "Nothing's wrong, but if anyone on board is a doctor, could you please let us know?" And then it was an old, I guess, Korean man was sick. Um, and then the steward, or what do you, s- the, the flight attendant yes. man, he told us that we were we almost had to l- emergency land in Anchorage, Alaska because of this sick dude. Wow. And then it is kind of funny, actually, because this ill man was on our flight, and then Evany and I both got really sick um, after the flight yeah. for about a week, and that's part of why we missed last week's episode. Yeah. Anyway, but hopefully uh, hopefully I didn't get the <laughs> new COVID. Thanks, old man. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm sure yeah. I didn't. But I you guys didn't not. have a flight attendant to help you. No. What a yeah, r- exactly. Yeah. And you know what? Ebony is really good at this stuff, and she's like, I'm going to tell everybody it's our honeymoon, which it was, but people are extra nice to you. And uh, like on an earlier flight, she told the lady, it's our honeymoon. <laughs> and then they're like, oh, is it? That's adorable. Here, have some free <laughs> champagne. Like that kind of thing. Nice. Oh. And she she did it with this guy too, but he didn't, and he didn't have a chance to pamper us because of the sick old man. And he mm. even told us, sorry, I would have paid you guys more attention, but <laughs> there was a di- like a dying guy. There was a man shitting himself, and he <laughs> took precedence over you. If you yeah. don't mind me saying, I believe that sick old men ruin everything. <laughs> <laughs> Romantic buzzkill. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Anyway. You say to the, to- the closed <laughs> lavatory door. <laughs> you and Ebony walked up to the bathroom and knocked on and go, Thanks for ruining our honeymoon, <laughs> sir. Help me. <laughs> 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 
Um, um, no need for alarm, but is there a doctor on this flight? I, I had that right before COVID spread. Flying back from Vancouver in February 2020, mm. someone had a mask on. And I was like, really? You're wearing the mask? Because mm. COVID was starting to spread in Vancouver. Mm-hmm. Do you remember that? Right. Uh. And then they needed a doctor. And then like uh, barely a month later, it was on. The world shut down. That was such a crazy time. Isn't that crazy? I remember listening to sports radio and in February of 2020 and them being like, you know, they might have to play games with no fans in the next few months. Like, it is a real thing. But still no idea yeah. how bad it got. And then Tom Hanks got it. And the oh world yeah. listened. The, the world sat up. The Hanky man. Hanks and NBA. Hanks and the, the NBA. Those are the two, mm-hmm. like, main big things that made us go, really? And we went, uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, Michael. Yes, James. I have a question for you. Choose answer if you choose to accept your mission. Wow, very intense. Okay. Who is the topic for this week's Evil Men podcast? Mission accepted, I will tell you now. So this week, I I think that the subject is a bit of, um, maybe it's a bit obvious, a foregone conclusion. It mm. might be like shooting fish in a barrel, okay. but I still think it'll be very fun. Oh my gosh, because you fun. haven't told us that you yeah. picked. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. excited. We're yeah. in the dark here and excited. Yeah. So let me tell you, I'll tell you right now. Huh? Our subject today is sometimes called the White Michael Jackson. He's a well-known musician and gigantic pervert. I'm talking about none other than disgraced glam rocker Gary Glitter. Whoa. <laughs> That's not that <laughs> obvious. <laughs> it didn't seem like it was a really obvious choice. I'm so excited. When you say his yeah. name, it's obvious why he's an evil man. Well, that's candidate. true. That's There's true. a picture of him, and who would have thought, seeing him in his all of his pomp <laughs> in the 70s, that this man would be oh. a big uh, sex pervert. He wow. doesn't look normal. Now... He At all. Just to tell the listeners, we're recording unusually on a Sunday because I'm going away. Mm. So I woke up on <laughs> Sunday, the day of rest, mm. and the first thing I did this morning was spend a couple hours reading about Gary Glitter while I was having my morning coffee and in toast. And I hope you went to church. spring weather. <laughs> it's a beautiful day. <laughs> I'm inside my We just talked about how <laughs> jean jackets are back. <laughs> <laughs> so a beautiful Sunday yeah. spring morning. I'm in my dark apartment. Not a lot of sunlight. <laughs> <laughs> drinking coffee, reading about a uh, pedophile sex pervert. Now, Gary Glitter is best known for, uh, uh, aside from <laughs> what he got known for later, yeah. but the... Hey! <laughs> yeah, that one, right? Rock and roll, part two. And they had... Yeah. Yeah, they still had to, like, debate whether to play those at games because they were so popular at, like... And we got a Jays game on in the background, too, And I believe I said on Evil Men that... I c- a dark <laughs> thought I have is that I actually do wish we could still play that at sporting events because the yeah. song is good. I yeah. love the song. Question: Does any uh, it's team? It's in the Joker too, right? Mm. It is the Joker. Too. Does any stadium <laughs> or team or league still play Rock and Roll Part Two? I think something <sighs> must. I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I kind of don't know. People in Atlanta should. still want to do the Braves chant. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm sure. Come on. Yeah. Anyway, are you guys ready to? Uh, Let's do the Gary Glitter chant. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're ready. And uh, we're going to have a petition at the end of this episode to uh, sign it if you want to free <laughs> Mr. Glitter. Uh, I'll put it in the show notes. Anyway, let's delve into Mr. Glitter's life. And first of all, fake name. What? Yeah. Gary Glitter is... What's his real name? Not all the glitters is g- Gary. <laughs> uh, uh, yes. Gary Glitter. Yes. <laughs> Gary Glitter, his real name, he was born Paul Francis Gad. Huh. I wonder if he's related to Josh Gad. <laughs> E-Gad. Yeah. Paul um, Gad. Paul Gad. E-Gad. Yeah. Oh, right. my God. Uh, but he's better known <laughs> to us by the stage name <laughs> Gary Glitter. He is an English former singer who achieved fame and success in the 1970s and 80s. His career ended after he was convicted of downloading child pornography in 1999. He was also convicted of child sexual abuse in 2006 and a series of sexual offenses in 2015. Even worse... Wait, he keeps going? Even worse, he is also a repeat drunk driver. So no child is safe. Jesus Christ. (laughs) He's literally a fucking menace to society. Well, let's hear it out. Yeah. Um, also, listeners don't know, but James Hartnett, Chris Locke, and especially Michael Balazzo 
are our actual stage names. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have some fun information about his uh, the other names he considered when he, when he gave himself a pseudonym. Uh, mm-hmm. But I'll get to that later, listeners. Oh. Tease. So Paul Francis Gad was born in the town of Banbury, Oxfordshire, on May 8th, 1944. Uh, so he was born during World War II. Uh, okay. You know? Oh, that must have damaged his brain. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, he never knew his dad, and his mother worked as a cleaner and was unmarried. I don't know why that they put that in the Wikipedia, as if mm. that's like... I feel like they put that in to say, like, that's why he turned out the way he did, because <laughs> his mother was unmarried. Now, she initially brought him up with the help of her mother. He was hard to control as a boy and was taken into local authority care at the age of 10. And although nominally a Protestant, he was educated at a Catholic school. Also, that might have had something to do with <laughs> how he turned out. You know, the Catholic thing is intense. It is. It's a dark cloak that covers half the globe. Mm-hmm. That's not true. Michael and I aren't intense. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And our sexual <laughs> appetites are perfectly normal and healthy. <laughs> right, James? That absolutely right. Yeah. Back me up. Uh, young, <laughs> young Paul frequently ran away to London, visiting the nightclubs where he would later launch his career. So he's a little, almost like a little Oliver Twist character, you know, running through the streets of London, you know, uh, living by his wits, going to nightclubs to, to check out rock and roll. I mean, Michael, to this point, he reminds me of you. He's going off to London well, to have a little bit of fun. Hopefully the parallels become less, <laughs> uh, de- you know, de- c- correct and you know, right. accurate. Yeah, yeah. Now, by the time mm. he was 16, little Paul was already performing at London clubs. His repertoire consisted of early rock and roll standards and ballads. And in January 1960, at the age of 15, under the stage name Paul Raven, he released his first single, Alone in the Night. So 15 years old, recording the single. That's pretty pretty good, you know? Yeah. Yeah, good work. And he had connections to some of the most powerful people in music at the time. A, oh. y- a year later, he signed a recording contract with Parlophone Records, and worked with the record producer, George Martin, before George Martin became uh, associated with the Beatles. They oh. produced two singles called Walk On Boy and Tower of Strength, but guys, neither sold very well, and uh, his co- recording career as Paul Raven stalled. And apparently George Martin felt like a failure for the rest of his life for never finding success with Gary Glitter. <laughs> 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 and that's true. And then, so his career is not going well. By 64, he was uh, working as like a studio assistant and doing warm-up for a, a TV show. He, uh, he did TV commercials and audition for movies. He's like us. Yeah. Just a sort of jobbing performer. And then he became <coughs> an arranger and record producer. Uh, sorry. Then he joined the band of a record producer and arranger called Mike Leander, who helped revive his career. How old was he then? Like 16. Oh, uh, so he got his career revived <laughs> yeah. at 16. Yeah. Lucky. So from 68 to 70, young Paul slash Gary, he uh, recorded and released several singles <laughs> with titles like Musical Man, Goodbye Seattle. Goodbye Seattle. That's interesting. He's yeah, in yeah. England. There's no connection yeah. to Seattle, presumably. I yeah, guess he yeah. just liked the name. Yeah. And he did a cover of the Beatles' Here Comes the Sun. Uh, and he briefly changed his name to Paul Monday, Paul from Monday. Paul Ray. Yeah, hmm. didn't didn't uh, still didn't well, have a hit. Well, here's my thought on that. Yeah. Monday's the worst day of the week. Yes, maybe yeah. if it was Paul Friday, Paul Friday yeah. or Saturday, he should have had you um, to give him some you know career advice mm. but and other advice as well. Um, <laughs> Paul sang the role. I, this was new. I didn't know this. Uh, p- young Gary Glitter sang the role of a priest in the original 1970 concept album of Jesus Christ Superstar. And I think that's pretty cool that Gary Glitter and Andrew Lloyd Webber <laughs> once worked together. <laughs> oh, he's we got to do and- a, a, uh, a Lloyd Webb. Yeah. Um, so let's get to the where he became the, b- the birth of Glitter, the birth ah, of the actual the Gary Glitter. Glitter. As the glam movement took off in 1971, Paul Gad adopted the stage name Gary Glitter, which he devised by playing a literal, a literal. <coughs> As the glam movement took off in 1971, young Paul Gad adopted the new stage name Gary Glitter, which he devised by playing alliteratively with letters of the alphabet working backwards from Z. So he had other 
options as names, including Terry Tinsel, <laughs> Stanley Sparkle, and Vicky Vomit. And I wrote here, he's just a goddamn garbage pail kid. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Vicky Vomit. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> Uh, yeah. Terry Tinsel is, I mean, I guess Gary Glitter is a ridiculous yeah. name, but Terry Tinsel and he is yeah, really you can only, bad. You can only really l- release a song like in the Christmas season. Yeah. yeah. And he missed Pervert Paul. <laughs> oh, God. Pedophile, Pedophile Peter. <laughs> Pedophile <laughs> Peter. <laughs> now let's get Little to Boy Larry. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the song that made Glitter's career, the song we all know and love, that many sports fans around the world still, they, a tear comes to their eye. A huge jock jam. Mm. Yeah, jock jams. Rock and Roll Part 2. So this started off as a 15-minute jam session, and it was whittled down to a pair of three-minute extracts released in 1972 as an A and B side, Rock and Roll Parts 1 and 2. I always thought that came out like in the punk era of the 70s. It predated, uh, yeah, predated punk. Okay. And part two. But it does sound T Rexy as well, which so is like right high at, at that the time. time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, and Gary Glitter, he's going for glam. Yes. Oh, I'm dumb. Okay. And no, you're not. Oh, thanks. So, Rock and Roll Part Two was the more successful side of this two, you know, two part rock and roll song. And it was a huge hit in many countries. Uh, although it took six months before it really spread. Mm. And it went to number two on the UK singles chart and reach the top 10 in the United States. One of the few British glam rock records to do so. Um, and that's it's interesting, because compared to David Bowie, who is much more respected and revered, or Mark Bolin, uh, Bowie only got a UK number two with the Gene Genie in 72, and had to wait until 1975 to have a US number one with fame. So for a while, Gary Glitter was like hmm. wildly more successful than like David Bowie and I think like T-Rex. <laughs> It's weird. It's interesting that song was a huge hit, too, on, like, I guess the charts. Could, are there vocals in it? Just Not really, right? It just goes like, hey, hey, yeah, hey. Yeah. 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 I've never heard Rock and Roll Part 1. Have you? Uh, no, and I don't care to. What? <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, it's, uh, anyway, that's his, his, that he, his career was off and yeah, running now. Yeah, does he say anything in that song? No. <laughs> I mean, unless we only hear the same <laughs> clip and they never go through the whole song. Uh, Hey, uh, well, it's rock and roll part two. <laughs> what you gonna do? <laughs> and the first so one's like, like well, Alice in Chains. <laughs> step right up, welcome to rock and roll part one, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> so we only knew that song in North America, but apparently in the UK, Gary Glitter had like a number of big hits in the 70s um, that I'm not even familiar with. Top 10 hits like. I'm the leader of the gang, I am. I love you, you love me, love, <laughs> and remember me this way. He had 11 consecutive top 10 singles uh, between Rock and Roll Parts 1 and 2 to Doing All Right with the Boys in the summer of 1975. He had 11 consecutive. Yeah, he was huge. I had no idea. I actually g- genuinely thought it was just the one song blew up. and I think that only was in North America he huh. was a one-hit wonder. The yeah. UK loves demented <laughs> men. <laughs> Have you ever seen... Including Mr. Michael. Uh, So we... Oh, yeah. We saw a uh, picture there of Gary Glitter. But have you ever seen... This was another guy, Alvin Stardust, who was like, oh, (laughs) Ziggy Stardust became famous. And this guy was like, I'm also a glam rocker. And he had a few hits in the UK. But You know what's a cool name? Alvin. (laughs) (laughs) He's very serious. I can smell smoke. (laughs) Like cigarette smoke looking at Like a pint and cigarettes. Yeah. Alvin Let Stardust. me be famous, you fuckers. <laughs> 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 That's what his face looks like. <laughs> I want to be famous. <laughs> so, yeah, there are all these, like, um, glam fly-by-night guys, including Alvin Stardust. But Gary Glitter for a time was, like, the king, and he was huge in the 70s in the UK. You know why I thought he was punk era? Because I get him mixed up sometimes with Adam Ant. Oh, like right. Like, two shoes. Two whatever. alliterative, stupid names. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now... Something that you'll think is funny, Chris, is uh, on his Wikipedia, under influence on other musicians, Mark E. Smith of The Fall is quoted as saying he was a huge Gary Glitter fan. No. And he wrote, he said, I was really into Gary Glitter, and I used to get badmouthed for it. It was like, you've got to be into David Bowie, or yes, Gary Glitter is just <laughs> trying. Or yes. And I was just going, it's fucking great. It's avant-garde. Well, two drummers and all that? It was really percussive. It was the only decent thing around, he said. 
<laughs> wow. You don't see the two drummer thing very often. To remedy that yeah. though, he at the same time he was a massive fan of Can. Yes. And wrote the ode to Demo Suzuki, which we all know and love, mm. right, James? Yeah. <laughs> but like and like Beefheart and all those weird guys. So yeah. maybe he just liked weird guys. And he's also a contrarian, so maybe he's like, I think it's funny to say I like Gary Glitter. Yeah. But yeah, totally. Anyway, after Gary Glitter's hit Doing All Right with the Boys, uh, he won Best Male Artist at the Saturday Scene Music Awards. Don't know what that is. His next Huge. release was a cover of the Rivington's novelty nonsensical doo-wop song, Papa Ooh Mau Mau, but it got no higher than number 38 on the British charts. Oh, shit. So he was like, <laughs> at that time, he was like, I know what'll turn my career around, doo-wop. And if that doesn't work, I'm going full pedophile. <laughs> <laughs> Worst case scenario? I've had it. <laughs> if this doo-wop thing doesn't work, I'm going to become a pedophile. <laughs> you Gary. made me a pedophile, the UK. <laughs> Gary, Charts. Please reconsider, Gary. Um, <laughs> so after he stopped getting hits, he uh, his singles were stalling in the charts. He announced that he was retiring from music in 1976 after four years only of having look, hits. Look, you know, aside from Gary Glitter, like, uh, let's take it out of that, <laughs> out of his world for a sec. <laughs> mm. Having hit upon hit and then boom, it's over. Yeah. God damn. I've always thought about that. When you read these stories about bands and singers. Yeah. That has got to be the hurtingest hurt you could ever feel. Yeah. That's or why they all go nuts. It's kind of like in our industry, too. If you're in a if you get a huge role when you're young and then it totally dries up, it can it must be hard. I yeah. I did a sh I mean, I don't want to go down a derail, but I did a short like 10 years ago with um the 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 uh Haley um Haley Joel Osmond. You did. Yeah. Yeah, and I met him as an adult and yeah, it was on he was really nice and I felt bad bad because some of the people working on the short, I could almost hear them maybe tittering about him and I thought that was really mean. He was like a nice guy, but he said now he works a bit and like does construction stuff with his dad. Huh? That's what he said. Uh, I know. Yeah. Well, that's tough when like yeah. you're pushing your kid into this fake reality and then, yeah, mm. they grow up and it's over. Showbiz is really tough. Yeah. Mm. And, and we're back yeah. <laughs> to Gary Glitter, though. We're feeling bad for Gary Glitter right now. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess that is what we were doing. No, 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 So, no. yeah, in 1976, his record sales are in the toilet. He took a two-year-long <laughs> exile living in France and Australia. It also feels like shit to be a toilet. <laughs> oh, let's talk about that for a second. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, he took two years off, lived in France and Australia before returning to the UK and planning not his comeback. Not, not quite yet. Not quite yet. Oh, God. Uh, by the end of the 70s... Uh, he had to declare bankruptcy. So in 1977, he declared bankruptcy, though he later blamed the high tax rate in the UK for his problems. And say what you will about his personal life and his actions, but you have to respect Gary Glitter's views on high taxes. <laughs> <laughs> right? You're right. Yeah. yeah, that's true. How how are entrepreneurs supposed to be able to have room to maneuver with yeah. these crippling taxes I in know. the late 70s in England? How do you open, like, yeah, a photography business or a <laughs> toilet cam business <laughs> or, a, you know, when your taxes are so high? I know. Uh, by the way, I saw this weekend that there were a bunch of articles about how the Rolling Stones only pay 1% in tax because... They're a church? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> church of blues. But they, <laughs> they've they got their, like, whatever investments and all the money's hidden in certain ways that they pay, like, basically no taxes. So that's no. pretty pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, it must be hard to go from, uh, yeah, star hit maker yeah. consecutively for four years to declaring bankruptcy just because of taxes. Can you believe taxes did that to him? <laughs> yeah, it's so mean. Yeah, that, that's mean. Taxes also did the other bad thing that he started yeah. to do. <laughs> taxes. <laughs> So he entered bankruptcy a second time oh over unpaid pa taxes in the 1990s as well. Um, Too many lattes. He was <laughs> 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 Too much avocado toast. <laughs> uh, he tried to release more songs, and even though they were hitting the charts, he owed so much money that he couldn't find a financial way out of the hole he had Well, where is dug. he now? We should call him. <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly where he is. He's in, I, I, I guess, can we call don't prisons? Don't spoil it. No, okay, spoil okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. I ruined it. Uh -huh. yeah, right. 
so he was there was a bit of a resurgence the post punk audience started talking about how like they respected him and they liked him and he got a bit of a resurgence with like the new wave uh Britpop and glam metal scene like around the uh 90s yeah th- like the late 80s 90s yeah hmm. then he got back onto the p- touring circuit and he had like uh he was performing recording making a living again until until exactly 1999 oh so he kind of hit a wall in 1999 something happened in 1999 um and i'll i'll get to that very shortly but do you guys remember that song in the late 80s that was like a Doctor Who? It was called Doctoring the TARDIS by a group called the Time Lords that was sort of the, the KLF. And it was like... What's uh, KLF? I don't know. It was they KLF. were like a so it was like techno band. Oh. It was like a cover of Rock and Roll Part 2, but they sang like Doctor Who. Hey, no. Doctor Who. Do you remember that, Chris? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I don't really know. Really I don't funny know. Though. Anyway, that was a big hit, so I think that helped him out. Doctor Who, financially. Doctor Who, yeah. hey. <laughs> uh, in 1987, Glitter received a 10-year driving ban and narrowly escaped imprisonment after a third conviction for drunk driving. And Jesus. that's pretty bad, right? Yeah. That's really dumb. But it's, it's not dumb as and arrogant. Not as bad as some things, though. <laughs> well, like what? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> I'm hinting at stuff I'm about to get to. <laughs> <laughs> let's take a break before we get into the... To his <laughs> terrible sexual uh, yeah. crimes. I feel like we're laughing too much at something heinous. Well, no, we haven't gotten no, no. to it yet, so we can still have deniability, yeah, and then yeah. we might get <laughs> to it. We'll get serious. <laughs> Just a little bit of personal <laughs> information call. before we get to his crimes. During the 80s, Gary Glitter became a Buddhist and a vegetarian, and he opened a restaurant near Leicester Square in 1991. Uh, it was um, Gary's Glitter Bar <laughs> being promoted under the slogan, Leader of the Snack. So... He's wait. He's a pedophile and a punster. <laughs> I honestly don't know which one is worse. <laughs> oh my god! I do think though that punsters should <laughs> be chemically castrated. <laughs> oh. They're smart. Yeah. Oh man. Um, Mike, you are fabulous. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> so yeah, he's don't ever change. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> it, there's an interesting <coughs> thing. Uh, he. In 1992, appeared on the TV show called This Is Your Life. And during the episode, an old friend talked about how uh, she used to have Gary Glitter in her apartment and charge schoolgirls five pounds or something to come up and see him, just to like to be in his presence and talk to him and stuff. And apparently on the show, Gary Glitter can be seen putting his fingers to his lips and telling his friend, shush. As if he didn't want to talk about oh these adolescent God. girls. Oh, God. And sorry, when was this? This was in 1992. Ooh. So a year after, uh, never mind. That's right. Oh, yeah. Mm. This is interesting as well. In 1995, uh, Oasis interpolated a line from Gary Glitter's 1973 chart hit, Hello, Hello, I'm Back Again, on their song, Hello, on the album What's the Story, Morning Glory. And this meant that Gary Glitter was legally credited as a co-writer, and he earns a lot of money, I think, to this day, for uh, the Oasis album, What's the Story, Morning Glory. Wow. And uh, that's not the only Oasis song co-written with a sex offender. (laughs) Wonderwall was also a collaboration with Subway spokesman Jared Fogle. Oh, my God. (laughs) Uh. Um, So we're getting close. To uh, to his, uh, <laughs> his downfall, <laughs> right? In September, <laughs> in September two thousand one, delight. Yeah. <laughs> in September two thousand one, this is interesting. He released a new studio album, which included material written before his nineteen ninety nine British conviction. Mm. Can you believe that he released an album after he got in trouble? Anyway, um, uh, a music industry lawyer claims that Glitter makes three hundred thousand pounds a year from Oasis. Oh my God, that is the that would be the dream, huh? Yeah. It's like you just keep getting these checks of something you helped out a bit with. Oh yeah. my God, well you're set. You didn't do anything. They just interpolated it, right? I think they, yeah. I guess the melody or the lyrics were close enough that, yeah. that he got uh, a cut of it. Yeah. Inter- wow. They interpolated it, eh? Hey, stop interpolating. We gotta put out some songs yeah. so some shit like this can happen yeah. to us. Cause like, 
This is fucking bullshit. <laughs> We're up here in Canada. We need to put out some fucking songs, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Call our band the Dads. Yeah. The Cool Dads. <laughs> <laughs> we should make a band called the Cool Dads. I, I can will. barely play any instruments, but you guys are good. <laughs> I could be the hype man. Oh, also, the song uh, Ahead by a Century uh, sounds exactly like a Gary Glitter song, and then every time people play that song by the Tragically Hip, Gary Glitter makes money, too. Um, remind me to uh, tell you guys about the aftermath of Rock and Roll Part 2 with the Joker after. Okay. okay. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. I think I was th- witnessing it live on Twitter at the time, but <laughs> yeah. So Oof, let's okay. get to... That's uh, an updated photo, I'm eh? showing you guys, I think, like a mug shot of Gary Glitter. So let's get to his... He looks like a, a, looks a, a fatter Vincent Price. Price? Yes. Looks like his name should be Gary Shitter. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. That's true. That Sherry is true. Shitter. So I'm going to tell you guys all about his uh, sexual offenses and various prison sentences. Okay, okay but can you stop laughing about <laughs> it? <laughs> <laughs> well, what I will say is that from here on in, this next section, it's awful, and he's a terrible man, obviously, yeah. but he shows a intense dedication <laughs> to being a pedophile, uh, that is uh, like almost yeah, astonishing. Like he he keeps getting in trouble. Yeah, for yeah. It. He doesn't. Yeah, that's now, crazy. BBC News described Glitter's fall from gl- grace as dramatic and spectacular. So, in 1997, Gary Glitter was arrested after he brought a laptop into a computer repair shop in Bristol, England, and a technician discovered like child porn images on the hard drive. Dumb guy alert. Yeah. I mean, all everything aside, yeah, what an absolute moron. Yeah. Get it? D- d- <laughs> don't take your computer in anywhere. You, I mean, I'm glad you did and got caught, but, but also... We're, we're glad he did. We're glad he but did. But, like, yeah, good yeah. Lord. Yeah. So he uh, just... <laughs> when he got caught, did he go like this? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> what? It's not working. What the... That's on... That is on the hard drive? Whoa, that's... W- I don't know. A virus, maybe? <laughs> And then further images were discovered by police during searches of his two homes in the UK. Mm. Right? So oh, it's, a, it's like looking more and more like he's he, he did it. He mm. was castigated in the news media over the allegations. And because of, because of the news story at the time, his appearance in the movie uh, Spice World, the Spice Girls movie, was cut from the, the completed film. Oh, uh, no. And... Uh, Interesting fact: Some call Gary Glitter the Sixth Spice Girl. <laughs> pedo, pedo Spice. <laughs> P- pedo Spice. At Bristol Crown Court in November 1999, because Baby Spice was taken. <laughs> <laughs> Keep him away from her. <laughs> he was going to be in the Spice I Girls movie. Just want to say, I don't find this stuff funny. No. it's very uncomfortable. No, he's we're laughing because he's an idiot yeah. and he mm. just can't stop. He seems like an insane yeah. fucking moron. And he, yeah, get get ready. Mm. Um, in 1999, in November, a uh, a court sentenced Gary Glitter to four months in prison and placed him on the sex offender registry, which is good in the UK, after he admitted downloading more than 4,000 items of CP. He was acquitted of a charge of having sex with a 14-year-old girl. Um, and it was later revealed that the complainant sold her story to the... N- I'll cut that out. Now, what follows is an exhausting chronicle of a man's dedication to sex crimes who was hounded out of every country in Asia for the next decade. Okay? So following his release in January 2000, Gary Glitter, he decided, UK is not for me, and he left the country where he had become a public hate figure. And check this out. He fled to live on a yacht in Spain. All right. Okay. Sort of like a self-exile punishment? Mm. Yes. So he lived in uh, Soto Grande in Andalusia for six months on his yacht, which was moored, moored at the marina. He told the locals that his name was Larry Brillante. <laughs> so like brilliant. Hey, are you Gary Glitter? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, uh, Larry Brillante. <laughs> Larry Litter. <laughs> but soon enough, the locals realized that Larry Brillante wasn't his real name. That he was Gary Glitter, the famous pedophile. Can you get away from our village? <laughs> <laughs> So he left Soto Grande and he moved to Cuba. <laughs> moved to Cuba, which is interesting. Seems so like he's just traveling around in this boat. Some yeah, of these yeah. guys, like remember um, 
what, what's that guy Andrew some whoever the the gross horrible guy moved to um, Romania yeah oh, Andrew Tate did yeah we Andrew do, Tate did we do him? yeah we did yeah. And Gary Glitter moves to Cuba moved to Cuba the, hmm. the uh, Socialist Republic of Cuba I wonder if he had a meeting with Fidel Castro I wonder mm. if that happened. Uh, this guy's too weird. <laughs> Get yeah. him out of Cuba. <laughs> he leaves glitter all over the furniture. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> um, and then he, after Cuba, moved to Cambodia, where he rented an apartment oh. in Phnom Penh. In late 2002, mm. he was detained over his previous sex offenses and spent four days in jail before being released on bail. In Cambodia? Yeah. Just like soldiers. Classic. <laughs> In January of 2003, he was deported from Cambodia to Thailand on a flight to Bangkok. When you're I deported from Cambodia, you fucked up. <laughs> 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 I was also joking, asking if he lived in Thailand. Oh. I didn't think he actually did. Uh, yeah. I think I heard that in the news oh, years ago. So after Cambodia, he decided, you know where I'd like to live? Vietnam. So he moved to Vietnam. Um, so I won't get into every blow-by-blow blow account of what happened, but he... Later faced criminal charges and deportation from several countries in connection with both actual and suspected sex abuse. He was deported from Cambodia uh, in 2002, settled in Vietnam, um, where in Vietnam a court found him guilty of obscene acts with minors in 2006. This is really fucking ugly. What a, yeah. He's and an idiot. After serving his sentence in Vietnam, he was deported uh, to the UK and was placed on the sex offenders registry for life. Uh, you know what donut coffee store he would love in Canada? Tim Deportant. <laughs> <laughs> hey? A little pun there, which Mike likes. <laughs> <laughs> this is an uh, interesting thing. Um, in Vietnam, Glitter could have faced execution by firing squad. Oh, my God. Where? In Vietnam. Holy shit. Can you imagine? He'd be like... Uh, don't shoot. You have the wrong man. I'm Larry Brilliante. <laughs> <laughs> it's and such also, like, why wasn't he executed <laughs> earlier? <laughs> <laughs> it says something. It's taken him a long time to yeah. be executed, in my it, opinion. It does say something about what kind of guy he is that he, you know, the na like Larry Brilliante, Terry Tinsel, like, he's <laughs> yeah. definitely a moron. I mean, uh, uh, aside from other obvious indicators. Yeah. Yeah. In an interview, so he went on a, he did an interview with BBC in May 2006 in which he denied he was a pedophile and claimed not to have knowingly had sex. All these other countries are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> like Every country. country in Asia is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> in my home country. Yeah. <laughs> and he claimed to never have knowingly had sex with anyone under 18. Okay, uh, Gary. <laughs> He said that he hoped to put his life back on track and have a career after he left prison in England, and he continued to blame the press for his downfall and called them, quote, the worst enemy in the world. <laughs> 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 Alleging, right. and he, he blamed, he, he claimed that, like, people had uh, paid girls in bars to, like, uh, to, set, like, to uh, seduce him and, mm. you know, stage photo uh, opportunities to make him look bad. Uh, that is happening so much, and it's, yeah. it's got to end. Everyone's out to get Gary Glitter. Yeah. yeah. Years, <laughs> decades after he was famous. Yeah. It was probably David Bowie uh, who was still uh, hurting mm. from being beaten in the charts. <laughs> uh, in June 20, 2006, in a closed hearing, a three-judge panel of the Supreme People's Court of Vietnam heard Glitter's appeal for a reduced sentence. The appeal was rejected. Um, and on February 7th, 2007, his sentence was reduced by three months. In anticipation of his release, the Philippines barred Glitter from entering the country. So the Philippines just uh, sort of ahead of time, even before he landed there, they're <laughs> like, yeah, don't even think. This seems like the kind of place he'd like. Yeah, Let's just, just go ahead and uh, nip I like that a bunch butt. of ca countries just yeah. for like independently saying, like, this is a Gary Glitter free <laughs> zone. <laughs> don't worry, travelers. So in Vietnam, Gary Glitter served his sentence uh, in a prison in a cell with 18 other foreign inmates and was exempt, exempted from hard labor because of his age. Seems uh, weird. In 2007, he suffered in prison. Um, he was determined to be suffering from high blood pressure and was put on medication <coughs> and told to stop buying beer from the prison canteen. So he's just having oh. a fun time in, in prison? You can buy beer? I mean, I guess he's a rich... Westerner, so he still had hmm. privileges. I'd get drunk 
every day in, <laughs> if I was in prison. Can't even. Where, 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 what prison was this? So he's in Vietnam. Yeah. She can't even um, enjoy a nice be- cold beer in a Vietnamese prison, eh? These days, no, <laughs> not, not anymore. All for the crime of being white. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In January 2008, after being taken to a prison clinic for treatment of intestinal problems, hmm. tests showed that Glitter also had an irregular heartbeat. He's got a regular damn uh, brain. Yeah. Especially <laughs> when he was around. Anyways. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> is, there, is there a young person hidden around in this uh, cell that's giving you a <laughs> weird heartbeat? Uh, later a school bus drives <laughs> by. Um, <laughs> has anyone seen my meds? My heart. <laughs> you sp- well, Gary, you just spilled your beer. <laughs> I uh, damn. I'm sorry. I spilled beer all over prison. <laughs> <laughs> uh, later that month, he suffered a heart attack and compo- uh, collapsed in his cell. He was taken to a hospital in Vietnam where he was kept under police guard. He was visited then in hospital by officials from the British embassy. And they must, I was like, imagine those officials going to visit him. They must have been like, uh, we hope you don't die. <laughs> yeah. God. Gary Glitter's Vietnamese lawyer said that his client intended to return to the UK, although he had also expressed interest in moving to either Hong Kong or Singapore. Hmm. So he's still avoiding uh, the UK. Also, I read that he uh, he expressed interest in visiting the country where the Muppet Babies were. (laughs) 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 Where the Muppet Babies were. Um, around this time, it was reported that Glitter would be placed on the sex offenders register on his return to Britain. Home Secretary uh, Jackie Smith at the time said that Glitter should be given a foreign travel order banning him from overseas travel and said, quote, we need to control him and he will be controlled once he returns to this country. So he was in quite a bit of trouble. Uh, he was released from jail in Vietnam in 2008 and he was taken by police guard to an airport in Ho Chi Minh City and put on a flight to London. But when it stopped in Bangkok, he complained that his tinnitus and heart condition were acting up and he refused to get on the plane. (coughs) And he just like stayed in the airport lounge for like um, a few days, refusing to fly to the UK because he knew that once he got back there, he'd be, you know, Mm. in real trouble. They don't have beer in prison. Yeah. Mm. He eventually was taken back on a on a plane in Hong Kong. Um, sorry, I'm confused here. Blah, blah. I'm sorry, I don't think I can go to that country right now. <laughs> <laughs> the old ticker's <laughs> acting up, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> so at least I hear a buzzing in my ears, and I <laughs> should sit down for a few days. At least 19 <laughs> countries, including Cuba, Cambodia, and the Philippines, announced that they would refuse <laughs> entry to Gary Glitter. God, this is insane. Um, and then he basically was like, okay, the jig is up. I have to return home to Great Britain. And on. Did, but did he admit the jig is up for real, or was he always in denial? Um, well, he just realized he couldn't fly anywhere and just keep this like, charade going. Did he going even right. consider Canada? No, and you know what? That's offensive. Tim Deportens. <laughs> <laughs> so on August 22nd, 2008, Gary Glitter, his plane lands Heathrow Airport, where he was met by British police officers. And it's awful to think about everything he did to get to this point, but just think of how many air miles he earned. <laughs> That's true. Who inherited those? Now, where's his yacht, is what I'm wondering. Yeah. I wonder what he called it. The uh, old stinker. Oh, it's probably like S- Billy Boat <laughs> or something <laughs> stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Sally Ship. Yeah. So he returns <laughs> to the UK. <laughs> boom! He's added to the UK sex offenders registry for life. Whoa. And uh, he wanted to appeal, but then he abandoned the appeal uh, shortly after. Um, in 2008, so he's already landed back in the UK. He's on the sex offenders registry. In an interview. He uh, was quoted saying that he planned to record a new album. (laughs) (laughs) Read the room. The self-confidence of this man is... I wonder if it'd have a a hip-hop influence now, you know? Music has kind of changed quite a bit. Um, He was quoted as saying, quote, Yo, my heart's acting up. (laughs) (laughs) Yo, everyone, my heart's acting up when a school bus goes by. (laughs) But sometimes I think the kids in it are pretty darn fly. (laughs) I didn't do anything. (laughs) 
<laughs> that's <laughs> one song. Just I didn't do anything. <laughs> I didn't do name anything. Name a country <laughs> in Asia. <laughs> Have I been in prison there? You betcha. <laughs> <laughs> you betcha. <laughs> <laughs> he was quoted as saying, I have an incomplete album that I want to finish. I've been thinking about the plan during my days in jail. Mm. I have sung rock and roll for 40 years. After jail, I will continue to rock and roll. (laughs) (laughs) Jesus Christ. The guy's brain is made out of like three (laughs) (laughs) M&Ms. It seems really dumb. Or Maltesers. England. (laughs) Right. So Gary Glitter... uh, he got caught up like after the Jimmy Savile case happened in the UK <laughs> and like every broadcaster from the 1970s Did was he say leave my friend alone <laughs> yeah, yeah. he's a good man um, yeah. every broadcaster from the 70s every DJ was like put in prison for being a, a you know pervert uh, Gary Glitter was also implicated in more crimes from the 70s and I think he got a um, a further jail sentence uh, for what he did Basically, he then he was uh, convicted or like accused and convicted of several more sex crimes, historic sex crimes, and was uh, spending more Is and more this time from in accusers prison. from the past, or like it just was like new ones from the past, yeah, okay, like okay. old ones. Um, and then the the most recent, we're just basically at the end of his story. Recently, as recent as 2023, on March 13th, 2023, after an investigation into his use of a smartphone, so he was finally released from prison. He was released from prison after going through, you know, uh, from prison to prison, a living hell, always being in court. Everyone hates him. He was free. On March 13th, 2023, after an investigation into the use of a smartphone, Glitter was recalled to prison for breaching his license conditions by allegedly viewing downloaded (laughs) images of children. He just can't stop. He can't stop downloading images of kids. This was like just a year ago, basically. That's insane. And uh, this year... February 7th, it was announced that Glitter's appeal for parole had been turned down by the parole board, who said, quote, It found on the evidence that at the time of the offending, and while he was unlicensed, Mr. Glitter had a sexual interest in underage girls. So. That's where he's at now? And he's in prison again? He's in goddamn prison again. Oh, my God. He's never going to see the bright lights of Hong Kong or Bangkok again. Now, Mike, you you did say when Gary's story was over, we we were supposed to remind you about a uh, something from the Joker, right? So remember when um, Joker, big hit movie. Don't mm-hmm. know if you recall you it. You saw it alone in theaters. Yes, I did. Uh, I had Joker, basically a ripoff <laughs> of Death Wish, Taxi Driver, and King of New York, or King Comedy, King yeah, of yeah. Comedy. And Sorry. Mike, I'm I would I'm not making fun of you for seeing a movie alone. I don't. <laughs> think that's lame at all but you were you said you were worried as a man going in alone to see the joker you felt a little bit weird when there was a lot of drama about only it. because in the news there were stories of like certain movie theaters aren't allowing single men <laughs> to attend the joker because there was a fear yeah. that someone was going to open fire in a screen yeah. uh but which in retrospect it is sort of i mean it's weird it how wasn't that <laughs> crazy a movie it was it's weird how the joker movie. character is you know psychopathic and evil in the stories of batman and yet there's a danger associated with art about the joker in our real society yeah Yeah. isn't that bizarre it's It's like a symbol of making men go mad to madness yeah um that movie was okay it was was like fine i feel like it didn't deserve uh, almost buzz either way but i remember the twitter hubbub because at that time i was still fully into the Twitter cult and got all my news from Twitter and it was, they were going crazy. People were going nuts. Oh yeah. yeah. So I'll tell you about the, cause they're saying it was like a movie for alt right thinker and both yeah. men, which and then it also, g- yeah, huh? which is, I think is cr- yeah. obviously crazy. Yeah. We're all jokers. <laughs> um, I'll tell you about the curious that's afterlife. Like, that's what, that's them saying that, not me. Yeah. God damn it. <laughs> well, here's about the afterlife of rock and roll part two. So, uh, about sports. In 2014, Billboard reported that Rock and Roll Part 2, which was co-written by Gary Glitter, was earning an estimated $250,000 a year in royalties due to its use in the NHL. Right. Now, some people would criticize... They got their problems, too. Some people at the time criticized the NHL for playing the music of a pedophile, but hey, that's just part of hockey culture. It's part of the Canadian way of life. <laughs> <laughs> now, I will say... 
Um, Ebony and I have, like, especially in traveling and stuff, really come to the conclusion that, like, okay, Michael Jackson's just not getting... Th- not no one's going to stop playing his yeah. stuff. Like, yeah. I, I can't remember. We were in so many... Even online, there are people who will kill you if, yeah. you, if you say that he was... The truthers. Yeah. yeah. yeah like, there's... Uh, it's well, amazing that, that he has... I think we've. I think as a society, we've just been like, Meh, I guess your s- music's too good. But don't you remember, <laughs> like, in the 80s, like, we used to get stronger winters here, obviously. Mm-hmm. And what did you do? You and your friends and your friends. Go dad, to Michael Jackson's mansion. And <laughs> no, over. you'd go into your big, your friends with the biggest backyard. <laughs> you'd use a hose. You'd make a rink. You'd play hockey. And then you'd blast. Gary Glitter on the speakers while you played <laughs> hockey. So like, you, what you're taking that away from us? And you pretend <laughs> in the nice weather, you pretend that you were flying. You play the game Airport, where you're flying from <laughs> airport to <laughs> airport in Asia, trying to find you know someone who would take you in. Um, but yeah, I totally associate the song with hockey, yeah. big time. <coughs> yeah. Uh, and here's about th- its use in the Joker movie. In October 2019, there was controversy over the use of Rock and Roll Part Two in uh, Joker. Due to the possibility, some people were afraid, like, why, you know, Gary Glitter's going to make all this money from his song yeah, being used in this, in this billion-dollar grossing uh, movie. But according to the L.A. Times, Glitter does not receive payment when the song is used as of 2019. Um, as he has sold the rights, and the U.S. rights to the song are now owned by Universal Music. Hmm. Oh. That does make you feel a little better. At least he's not mm. getting rich off it. it. Yeah, that's what I thought. They were anymore. He was getting residuals. But also, you're still... Saying in a way like, yes, I know what he did, but I don't care. Well, there was yeah. still a choice. That's the part that I thought was fucked. Because everyone mm-hmm. had to think about Gary Glitter. Once you hear that song, you only think of like mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> a man trying to find uh, refuge in an Asian country like because he's a pervert. What's the director? Howard. Isn't it Todd Howard? No. Oh, that's Todd Haynes. That's Ron Howard. No. Todd Haynes. No, Todd, Todd Blair. Todd, I'm Googling Todd Joker. <laughs> Todd Joker. Uh, Todd Phillips. Todd, Todd Phillips. Phillips. Also, he did old school. Todd Phillips. <laughs> Alvin Stardust. Alvin Stardust looks like if Stomp and Tom, like. <laughs> Was uh, a glam rocker. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the, the fact they used the, that song. But must Todd have been Phillips was being cheeky, is what I'm saying. For He's sure. Like, right. The must Joker is evil and doesn't. It's a subversive choice. The Joker is a psychopath. And yeah. so and he loves I'm going to create Glitter. the air aura of that around like yeah. the big scene where he danced th- is down yeah. those dumb steps. Well, the Joker t- sequel that's coming out, it's a musical. And I think I read the plot is about Joker trying to break <laughs> Gary Glitter out of prison. Because <laughs> in, yeah. the, in the movie, <laughs> Gary Glitter's in Arkham Asylum. Oh, okay. And they're breaking <laughs> him out uh, to bring him to Gotham. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, and like, and Todd Phillips and his co-writers are like smirking and high fiving because they know how much that's gonna trigger the libtards. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making a movie to trigger the libtards with Joaquin <laughs> Phoenix and Lady Gaga. <laughs> 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 no. <laughs> I wonder if they'll use a Gary Glitter song in or like that song in the sequel. They they probably will, right? I don't, I don't know. know. That's like the most iconic scene from the first one. Yeah. I don't know. Wow. They wanted it to be, but it just, his dancing didn't match with the rhythm of the song, even. Like, I thought it was a clunky scene in general, no matter what the song was. Phillips, Stupid you fucked up. <laughs> fucking idiot. Oh my God. Wow. Someone's not worried about not getting cast in Mr. Phillips' next film. I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> well, so ends the sordid story of Gary Glitter, Paul Gadd. There's a story <laughs> of a not a lovely guy. <laughs> Vicky Vomit. <laughs> Vicky Vomit. Well, great job, Mike. Very interesting. And um, yeah. thank you. Yes. We know a little bit more about Glary, Gary Glitter today than we did yesterday. We do. We do. So I got to say, I'm kind of a psychology nut. And I was trying to think like, oh, well, <coughs> what Michael Jackson and Gary Glitter have in common is they were both like children still while being pushed to become famous. Mm hmm. But then I was thinking, does that break your brain? And then so you've got this weird mental, like coming of age sexuality thing stuck, like uh, in a sp- specific time of your life, and that's why you're still like thinking of young people. And so many children are pushed to be famous. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't think that's a thing. <sighs> it's very. It tricky. can't be right. The psychology of it is a hard yeah. thing to. But get also your head in that time, yeah. like so many rock stars. 
basically did the same thing I he know. did. Mike, you know what I was he thinking? He just kept doing it for forever. Well, you know what I was yeah, thinking? Yeah, David Bowie did. That's like they, Jimmy Page. L- that's yeah. what I was going to say. Like th- The separating of the art and the artist can be a little arbitrary sometimes because, you know, yeah, like I guess they say David Bowie did some fucked up stuff. Yeah. And we don't want it. We don't want to go down that road with young certain groupies. people. Yeah. I, I will say, though, it's easier to separate, to, to, to uh, throw some artist's work in the garbage with their uh, reputation, such as Gary Glitter. Well, that's what <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Michael Jackson, I, we just go, yeah, but Michael Gary Jackson Glitter's got that song. one song. Yeah. It's like, whatever. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> 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 he looks stupid. Yeah. <laughs> you're hmm. cool. You're cool. You're cool. <laughs> Fuck you. You're cool. Michael Jackson, David Bowie. Uh, you're cool. Iggy Pop. R. Kelly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anthony Kiedis. Yeah. Oh God. Anthony him Kiedis too? talked about it in his book. Getting with underage girls. One, one. He took mm. off and like, they. He spent like a lot of time with this like fourteen year old girl or something. It's oh in his my fucking Lord. book. Lord. Yeah. But Gary yeah. Glitter makes it easy. But he was like early twenties, yeah. but it's still like. Pretty weird, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't do that if I really. But imagine 20s. if Anthony Kiedis was still to this <laughs> really? day flying around. Not to excuse what he did, mm. but imagine if he still today was like flying around to different countries. Yeah. <laughs> trying to like <laughs> keep it going, like. Yeah, like Gary Glitter used that excuse his whole life. Yeah. All around the world. And One to be night, fair, I, I yeah. can't imagine Anthony Kiedis even knows how to oh. operate a computer properly <laughs> to even <laughs> download, you know, anything from the this? dark web. No, this is totally different. It's a different story. <laughs> California, <laughs> don't read my book. <laughs> 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 yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. No, I'm not sticking up for Anthony Kiedis. God, <laughs> I don't think th- he's someone that anyone should stick up for. He I seems insane. The hero of our story is that brave uh, computer repair technician. Oh, my God. Yes, yes, you're right. He threw himself on the grenade. Yeah. Uh, or he <laughs> found the grenade. On the glitter bomb. <laughs> <laughs> he got glittered. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. He had to sacrifice Gary Glitter hating him. <laughs> <laughs> he struggled because he, re- he was his favorite musician. Yeah. <laughs> oh this no. is going to suck because Gary Glitter's going to be mad at me, but. <laughs> <laughs> hey, buddy, how was your day at work? <laughs> oh, worst day ever. <laughs> My hero came in and he hates me now. You know that song that goes, uh, hey, <laughs> I fucking got that guy arrested. <laughs> Fuck. Well, you know what? <laughs> if you <laughs> actually speed up, like if you speed it up, <laughs> it's a kid's voice. Fuck a kid! Hey. Oh my <laughs> god! <laughs> Don't! Oh my god! <laughs> it's like it's like oh god! <laughs> oh uh, my! Well, um, I guess we should bring out the evil amateur. Oh, it's uh, it's wearing a, a <laughs> hair the style of Gary Glitter, and it's got oh uh, plane tickets to uh, Cambodia, and it's um, it's got tinsel hanging off its arms <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and vomit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, evilometer, you, you you make me feel dirty. It just spilled beer. Yeah, it well. Spilled beer. I feel like it's pretty difficult to parse uh, numbers of <laughs> a heinous <laughs> crime like this. I'm just going to give him an eight and not think about it. <laughs> okay. I'm going to go nine and I'm going to say, fuck off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm going to give him a 9.9 and say, fuck you, die in prison, Gary Glitter. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Especially because also the drinking and driving as well. Good God. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Fucking piece of shit. Oh. W- although he's right on tax on the tax thing, he's right <laughs> on the tax thing. Mm-hmm. Okay, tax. can I change yeah. my <laughs> <laughs> high taxes? Seven. S- they stifle uh, risk taking and entrepreneurship, and that's those are things we need. I guarantee yeah. most of the topics of every episode we've done uh, didn't like taxes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, starting with the yeah. Unabomber for sure. So fuck you, Gary Glitter. You're in jail. Hope you hear this and um, then you feel bad. You know? Oh, wow. Yeah, fuck I you, never dumb thought dumb. about that. Yeah. Yeah. But keep an eye out for Joker Part <laughs> <laughs> Um Anything that we need to spread to the masses I'll about our independent careers? I'll just mention again, uh, please check out Davy and Jonesy's Locker on Hulu in the States and Amazon Prime in Canada. And you'll notice in episode one, quite a little cameo by our podcast on a T-shirt uh, that throughout is so the episode. Sweet. 
and uh, please check it out. Yeah. Congrats to everyone involved, including, obviously, it's Ebony's brainchild, but then also so many damn good comedians are involved. It's quite awesome. Thanks, Chris. Lots of damn heavy hitters. Yeah, yeah. man. Um, this is a funny one. If anyone is listening in the UK, I will be on Friday, April 12th at the Poodle Club in London on the 13th, uh, which is Saturday, at the Bill Murray doing some stand-up comedy. Cool, Mike. Man, if you we if you're a new UK listener and you haven't seen Mike do stand up yet, go. It'll be awesome. I think I have shows coming up too, but I don't have my calendar here. So whatever. Just follow me on Instagram, I guess. Hmm. Guys, that was a really good spring is finally here <laughs> episode <laughs> of Evil